Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to do HD index painting in Krita. Now if you don't already know what HD index painting is, let me quickly walk you through it. So this guy's blog is where I first heard about it, and it's basically a technique to enable you to draw pixel art faster and save a lot of time. Especially when drawing large backgrounds like these. It doesn't save as much time if you just draw small figures and stuff like that, but for large backgrounds, backdrops, skies, stuff like that, it really can save a lot of time. So what it basically boils down to is that you draw with normal painterly tools, like you would when painting normally, basically. And as you paint, the program restricts your colors to a certain color space or a certain palette, basically, that you've chosen beforehand. So what this allows you to do is to apply procedural dithering, to do stuff like dither sampling, as you can see there, where you sample a certain dither pattern and then you can paint with it. You can apply different dithering patterns procedurally, and you can use all kinds of dirty tools like smudging, gradients, stuff like that, uh, to do what you want to do. Now, this guy explains how to set it up in Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to explain to you how to set up the exact same thing in Krita, basically. If you don't know already uh, Krita already, let me quickly show you that as well. So Krita is a program that's basically great for painting, and it has all the basic tools that you would expect a painting program to have. Uh, it has a great tablet workflow. Um, it supports uh, uh, full-screen canvas, rotating, zooming, stuff like that. All the kinds of stuff you would need to be productive with a tablet. And it's completely free and open source. So uh, there's no reason to not at least try it, I guess. Uh, but to try the features I'm going to show you today, you need an experimental version, not the stable version. So to get the experimental version, you can uh, head over to the Kickstarter page. And uh, under the updates, they have posted a link to a new experimental version. Now, this is an experimental version, so it might have bugs. Here's the link for the Windows version. Here's the link for the Ubuntu version. If you have any other distributions, it's not very hard to build Krita yourself from source as well. So... Um, that's how you get the latest version. So expect some bugs, but it's really amazing. They have some cool new features, so it's uh, definitely worth trying it out. So let me quickly show you something that I've already done with this. Um, here's, for example, a simple cloud that I drew in maybe 10 minutes. And let me just show you the, uh, the, the pattern sampling quickly. Let's see. Let me just select a better brush. Let's go with Gaussian. And if I s I'm on the right layer, yes, I am. If I now select, for example, this dithering pattern, then I can paint with it. I can select this pattern, paint with it, this, paint with it. And if I set, if I sample, for example, a very dark pattern and I set the opacity lower, I can, of course, sort of erode stuff away and paint basically layer upon layer of this transparency. And that way, uh, basically goes through the different pattern level and the different color levels and um, add detail that way. Uh, let me show you another example. So I've drawn this in maybe about half an hour uh, and that shows you nicely, this is not really finished or anything, it's just a doodle, but uh, it shows you nicely how to, you can do sort of larger scale drawings relatively quickly with this technique. And um, here you can see I've used a different dithering pattern in the background. This is actually two dithering pattern mixed together. And I can show you quickly how to exchange the different patterns. Let's see. Um, this is a sky backdrop. And here we have the dither pattern. Oh, actually, I have um, only one dither pattern added here. Let me show you in the other image. There we go. Um, there we go. So, for example, if you don't like this dither pattern, well, you can add a different one. For example, this, this, or maybe this. Uh, this is basically, you know, the traditional dithering pattern that just has the five dice pattern. And uh, you can switch these out and experiment around with it, and you can even mix them to any kind of capacity you want. And uh, it looks pretty great. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you now how to set this up from scratch, basically. I'm going to just uh, open a new uh, document first. And uh, exact resolution doesn't really matter much. All right, and let's see. Let me just uh, first add a layer group. Layer groups are pretty useful to just organize your stuff. And basically the way I do it is for every object that is sort of in a different color space, I would want to use a different layer group. So let's just call this background. Okay, I'm just gonna shove this layer in there. And let me just adjust my brush size. Um, I'm just gonna draw some stuff first. Alright, 
So now on top of that, I'm going to add the important filter layer. And now the filter layer is basically what does the color reduction. And we're going to mess some more with the palette later. But let me just show you right off the bat what it looks like. So there we go. Not what we want, probably, but um, let's just disable it for a bit. Now what I like to do to get more control over what my palette looks like is to first create a gradient. And let me just select this and the gradient tool and make sure I'm on the right layer. There we go. And unselect. Now we have a nice gradient, and this basically shows us what this filter does when we enable it to our color palette. So now we can mess around a bit with the knobs here. Um, let's go for something similar to what the guy had in his blog post with like uh, bluish tones, I guess, and a bit of uh, turquoise in the high end. Uh, let's make this like this, and this, and like this. And I'm going to add pure white, and I'm going to add pure black. And then this can be a bit higher. Okay. So this is about what I want. Lacking a bit of definition, a low end, but not so important. Alright, so let's just try painting with this. And a bit smaller brush. Oh, that's a bit too small. There we go. So now I'm painting with black, basically. Um, let me just get out a different color selector. And as you can see, it always reduces the colors down to what you already had. Uh, let me just fill this with white. Let's see. Oh yeah. And transparency, um, we've set transparency to one alpha step. So anything that has below 50% transparency is basically ignored. Alright, and let's some medium colors. And we didn't actually add any red in here, so even though I am drawing with red, it just basically gets reduced to the nearest uh, bluish hue that matches that hue the best. And as you can see, we can use all the kinds of brushes that we would use normally. Alright, so uh, let's put in the dither pattern now. Uh, now, Krita has this feature to add a fill layer that can fill a layer with a dither pattern. Uh, the guy in his blog posts uh, recommend 16 by 16 image patterns, which has worked pretty well for me. Uh, but I'm just going to copy past them over from a different project. I don't want to put them all in separately right now. There we go. And now the important thing is this layer is set to overlay. Okay. And it's set at about 10% uh, transparency. If you set this up, I vary between about 5% and maybe 20%. And that gives you different levels of how much dithering you want applied, basically. So, okay, let's just try to turn it off completely. So this is no dithering. This is just a little dithering. And then you can go up to, you know, a lot of dithering. But, uh, you know, you want to find some balance, probably. And let's see which dither layer do we have activated right now. And right now we have the plain dither layer activated. So let's try, for example, swirly or diamond. Uh, actually, let's make it a bit more pronounced. Let's go up to like that. Okay. Uh, irregular diagonals, pinstripe, stripe waves. So, you know, you can you can just basically add any kind of dither layer that you want, any kind of pattern that you want. And I'm going to upload this project afterwards so that you can actually import it and mess around with it. And that's about that. So, um, let's go on to sampling. And let me just activate the plane pattern. There we go. Uh, now, if you want to if you want to use the sampling technique where you can sample a pattern, a pattern, you need to make sure that the color picker is set to current layer. I believe uh, by default it's set to sample all visible layers. So you so you need to set it to current layer. And then basically what you can do is you can just pick a color, and then you can paint with it. And there you go. It basically works the exact same way as described in the book in the blog post. And uh, another important thing to note is that the stuff outside of this layer group is basically completely unaffected by the filter. So you can have several of these layer groups and have a different color index space and uh, have them all separately but in the same composition. And, you know, that way you can make some very nice effects and you can use different colors. And, of course, you can always, uh, after the fact, change your color space around. That's also no problem at all to uh, change the look of some object or just the general feel of your image at all. Which is, of course, a nice technique to basically color correct, stuff like that. And 
Uh, you can also, of course, afterwards apply dirty filters to the whole layer group, which then act sort of outside of the domain of the index filter. So uh, they may generate more colors and not, not be strictly inside your color space. But if you want to color correct or edit that way, then yeah, you can do it. All right, that's about sums it up. Uh, th thanks for listening and give it a try.